Alrighty guys, we're just gonna go ahead and jump right on into it. Here is how to make a now playing GUI that also has the song name next to it and it plays for everybody at the same time in the server. Really easy, only about like, I don't know, 20, uh, I would probably say a little bit more. I would probably say like 40 lines of code and it's also really easy to use and it's also really effective and we're also gonna be learning a little bit of coding concepts today, all right? So the very first thing that we need to do is that let's go ahead and make us a GUI, all right? So to make a GUI, there's starter GUI in our Explorer. You can view your Explorer by hitting View and Explorer. All right, and then once you have that up, starter GUI, insert object, screen GUI. All right, and then you're going to insert object, frame. Here's our framey boy right here. Uh, we'll, and you could design this however you like. I'm just going to make like a little sliver up here. Here we go. Nice little sliver, bam. And I'm going to insert two different things. All right, text label, which my text label is just going to go right here. And I'm going to rename it to Now Playing. I'm going to change the text to Fantasy, just because. You know, you could do whatever text you want. Uh, I just recommend, you know, Fantasy is pretty nice. And, uh, you know, it's a, uh, and in terms of text scaling, like I, I just prefer text to be scaled so that it fits. All right, and then a slightly bigger one that, um, that I'm going to rename to Current Song. It's a very important that you rename it to something that's other than text label. Okay, and I'm gonna simply put, just put nothing in there for now. All right, you know what, I'll just put nothing. I'm gonna scale it so that's nice and big for the people to see. And I'm gonna also t change it to fantasy. All right, and now just a couple more things that we have to do, or uh, I think one more thing really. We're just gonna change the background transparency of both of these to one. So that kind of looks like this. So I know it looks a little bit disorganized. I'm not a GUI freak. You know, I'm more of a coding geek. Uh, hey, that rhymed. Uh, so I would just probably keep it at that. All right. So now that the GUI is done, all you need is just two text labels and a frame. Now we're just going to go ahead and go into server script service. We're going to insert object. We're going to put in a script. Hello world. Bop. Dead. First thing that we have to do. Okay. The very first thing that we have to do is, oh, wait, no, no scripting yet. We need to insert some sounds. All right. So we're going to go into our workspace. We're going to insert what's called a folder. We're going to rename it songs. Now I'm just going to go into our toolbox to view the toolbox. It's view toolbox. And then you go into audio over here. Let's, uh, let's sort this out by favorites, you know, however you want. Oh yeah. Caillou trap remix. Of course, Shrek and oh yeah, this is going to be a great soundtrack right here. I'm just going to add all the songs I want raining tacos. I'll look up like, I don't know, juice world or something juice world. Uh, what is it? What is the song? Cool. All right, so we'll put Juice World in there as well. All right, throwing in some Juice World. So, like I said, you can put in as many songs as you as you want. Um, it will play every single song in your script, okay, or in this folder. So the very first thing that we need to do is that we need to we need a pathfind to our folder. So we're gonna say local songs is equal to game dot workspace dot songs. Now when we do this, we say, hey, the thing that we're trying to find is inside of our game. It's inside of our workspace. And it's labeled songs and there we go i found it so now i have access to now all of these songs right there now the next thing that we have to do is i'm going to put wait time is equal to 10 we'll do for now just for the just for the example what wait time will be is how long you want your song to play for before moving on to the next song now next one we're going to need what's called our replicated storage because we're going to be doing something that's called fire all clients okay which basically what that will do is it will basically change everybody's GUI at once, but we'll get to that. All right, and we're gonna say game.replicated storage. All right, so now that we got our replicated storage, by the way, replicated storage is a way for servers to talk to clients and clients to talk to servers. Now you're probably wondering, what is a server versus what is a client? A server is basically what happens overall in your games. So a server is kind of like, hey, you know, I'm watching over all of these people play the game. And I'm going to do stuff on my end while they do stuff on their end. So an example would be, oh, if I wanted, let's say, this brick to change colors for everybody in the game, I would just say while true do, you know, this brick dot brick color equals brick color dot new, you know, or brick color dot from RGB. And then I would do like math dot random, math dot random, math dot random. So this this brick will just change colors over and over and over again. And everybody's going to be able to see it versus a client script which basically is specific to only the client. 
So let's say I put that same script in a client. The client, the, that on, the only the player that has that script will be able to see this brick change color. All right, so for example, if I had a brick color dot new math dot random, uh, you know, for all these, each person in the game would see a different color. So like this person would see a blue, this person would see a pink, this one would see a yellow, this one would see a green, and so on and so on and so on. Everyone would see a different color once they loaded into the game. So that's the so that's the difference. The script happens for everybody. The local script only happens for the client, aka the player. Okay. So getting back to this, we need a, what's called a remote event. So in our replicated storage, we're going to insert object remote event. We're going to rename it to change GUI. And so I'm just going to put this as change GUI right here. So local event equals game dot replicated storage dot change GUI. Now this is where the fun begins. We're going to say while true do, which is basically a script that happens over and over and over again without stopping unless we put in the word break. For IV in pairs, um, songs, get children. Here's another lesson for you. All right, so here's what for IV in pairs does. Say we have a table, and basically what a table is, which I'll show you in a second, it's a collection of data. So in Python, this is typically position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4. In Roblox, it's position 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, now you're probably wondering, well, what exactly is the position? Simply where it is on the table. And these are values. So if I were to say print out the value, oh, print out the, oh, wait, hold on. I, I even wrote this wrong. Uh, table equals. All right, then I'll say table, or I'll say print table two. So basically what this is saying is I want to print the value at index two. One, two. It's going to print out four. If I were to say print out whatever's at table four, one, two, three, four, it's going to print out the number eight. Okay. And so what for IV in pairs does is let's say I had my table back. I don't know why I got rid of it. Could have probably just done control Z. So let's say I had, um, let's say I wrote a different one for IV in pairs. Uh, table get uh, I probably shouldn't do that no 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 all right so for this case I'll just do like you know table so basically what it is is that it's taking all of these elements inside a table I is the index so I is going to start with one V is the value so at position one the value is two all right and then and then it's going to be like okay next is position two position two the value is four and so on and so on and so on. So if I were to do V equals V plus one, basically, or basically it'll take this value right here. Okay. It will take this value. So let's say at index one, the value is two, two is equal to two plus one. So this two actually becomes three and then it moves on to the next one. Okay. At index two value is four, four is equal to four plus one. So this four becomes five. So our end table, is going to be is going to be three five seven nine eleven and that's how basically for IV and pairs works I just want to move on all right so now we do the same thing but with songs okay so we're able to find the data of these songs now all right so now what we do is we want to play the song so each of these songs are going to be played in this script right here but we don't want them to play all at the same time. So we're just going to say wait play time. And then we're going to say V stop. So it's going to play the song. It's going to oh wait time, not play time. Wait time. And then it's going to stop after that. So this will, so this script alone will play the song for everybody in the server. And it's going to be the same song or I'm sorry. We also need to change this to uh, game to our songs, get children. So this alone right here will play the same song for everybody in the server forever until we stop letting it do and still until we stop or until we write break and break again. It will end the it will end the two loops. OK, but now how are we able to make it so that the server tells everybody in the game the current song? Well, we need to do something here that's called fire all clients. 
fire all clients. And we're going to pass through whatever the current song is. Now, what basically what fire all clients does is that it says, hey, everybody in the game, you know your GUI? We're going to go ahead and change that. Everyone in this game is going to have their GUI changed at the same time. Okay? So now, what we do is the only way to change a GUI of a player, or at least the easiest way to do it, is through a, um, is through a local script inside of everyone's GUI. So I'm going to put a local script inside of our current song right here. And now here's what we write. We're going to take these two variables. Bop. Okay. And now we're going to say event on client event connect function current song. So we're going to do it kind of like that. And we're going to say local. Uh, I probably shouldn't do current song. I'll just do like, I don't know, current. I don't know. Current. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess I will do current song. Then I'll do this one as like playing song or something like that is equal to script.parent. To make it easier, I'll just rename this to playing song. You don't have to, but I will. All right, so here's what it should look like so far. So we have playing song, local playing song is equal to script.parent, okay? So now what we did was that we took data from the server. We took the current song that the server's playing and we handed it out to all of the clients in the game, AKA all of the players. So now we need to change everyone's GUI to that song name. So I'm gonna say uh, playing song dot text. So we're able to change this text right here. All right, so we're gonna change that nothing to the name of the current song equals current song dot name. And that's it. Let's go ahead and give it a try. So let, let me go ahead and just give it a try in just by myself. It's not gonna work at once. So you see as we load in, oof. You know, it's not gonna work at, at first. I think that we might need to wait. But as you can see, now we changed it. We might wanna change it, so that the label's a little bit to the left. But now we wait 10 seconds, blah, blah, blah. It goes on to the next one, plays the next song. It's playing Spooky Scary Skeletons. Yes, you guys can hear that. All right, then we wait 10 seconds, moving on to the next one. And then Raining Tacos, and then it also plays the Now Playing at the top as well. Now, like I said, we could change this to like 40 seconds or even a minute, and your minute song will play, and it will wait for that long, and then we'll stop the song, play the next one. Okay, and then what we did here was that it took the current song that's playing and changed everybody's GUI to the name of that song. So just to prove to you guys that it works, I'm going to spawn in three different clients. And basically, three different clients means three different people. And they're all me. So here I go, going in. Oh, there is a lot of Caillou playing right now. But you hear that all of them are in sync, despite joining late. Okay, so each of these clients join like a millisecond later. But everyone is playing at the same time. So I know it sounds a little bit weird. But, oh wait, I changed it to 40 seconds. I don't want it to do that. Time out, time out, time out, time out. Yeah, 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 okay. And it might be a little bit off because of uh, Roblox audio not being exact, um, but it's very similar. Okay, so I'll do wait time, you know, instead I'll do wait time 10 seconds just to prove it to you. So I'll still do the same thing with the, with the uh, three players just to load on in. Do, 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 do. Caillou. Alright, right, the correct anthem. Everybody's in sync despite joining me. late. I the sharpest the next song. She was looking... And then everyone's song is at the same time despite joining in a little late. And the next song. Very nice. It's rain and tacos. And that is how... Oh, wait, this is a Juice World song. Yeah. Alrighty, and that is how you do a now playing GUI, and you're also able to include your very own songs in it. Yes, Caillou. That's it. I'm done.